Knife goes in, guts come out. Knife goes in, guts come out. Knife goes in, guts come out. Knife goes in, uh, guts come hey, out. Hey, Doug, what you doing? Oh, I'm just practicing for the holiday party I'm having over at the Fish Warehouse. It's going to be great. We're going to be doing gutting, descaling. We're going to have sushi tacos, and we'll be bobbing for row. You're invited, John. Uh, thanks, but I'm busy that day. <laughs> I haven't told you when it is, silly. It doesn't matter. I'm definitely busy. I'll be having my holiday party at Bitter and Esther's this year. They can accommodate up to 25 people. One of Bitter and Esther's brewmasters will help us brew six or maybe even 12 cases of beer. We can have it catered or we can just order food from one of the many fine local restaurants. We can bring our own beer or wine and it's a lot of fun. You're invited, Doug. Well, that sounds great. I'll bring the fish. No fish! The best part is that in three to four weeks, a few of us will come back to bottle up our cold carbonated beer that we'll then take home. <laughs> or instead of taking it home, you can bring it to the fish warehouse for another party. I said no fish. Jeez, okay. Uh, so how do I go about booking a party at Bitter and Esther's? It's funny you should ask. You would email yourself, douglas at bitterandesters.com, and you'll give you all the information you need plus a detailed quote. Oh, that's right, yeah. The Brew on Premises also makes a great present. Just purchase a gift certificate for it on our web store and then book your party later on. Happy holidays to everyone from all of us here at Bitter and Esther's. Or, as they say in France, enjoy your fish. What did I say? BitterandEsters.com Welcome to See What You Can Brew, the podcast about homebrewing, community, and everything beer in New York City. Brought to you by Bitter and Esters in Brooklyn, New York. We're your hosts, Douglas Amport. And I'm John LaPola. And all the fish in the East River. <laughs> what did I tell you about the fish? The hey. fish. <laughs> Hey everybody, today we're going to do things a little bit differently and give you all a break from the hard-hitting investigative journalism that we usually bring to the program. Hard-hitting. Hard-hitting. Instead, we're just going to talk at you for like half an hour. What Doug means to say is that today on the show, we're going to discuss one of the more subtle and important topics in beer brewing, agua. Agua. How do they say it in French, Doug? Um, de l'eau. De l'eau. Water. L'eau. Water for brewing. No. We will talk Didn't. about that today. And since we've got a resident expert in the house, I thought it would be good to just interview John here. But first, a couple things going on. Well, before we talk about the news, I want to uh, mention something about this podcast you're listening to. This is our 10th episode. Yay. And so we want to thank everyone who's listening by drinking a beer <laughs> on the podcast whilst you listen to us. It is, uh, what time is it right now? It's 1030 in the morning. So it's totally time to totally drink a beer. Totally time to start drinking. <laughs> um, First of all, I want to say thank you for, if you've subscribed, uh, either through uh, iTunes or Google. We really do appreciate that. Or but, Spotify. Or Spotify now. I mean, how cool are we? It's super fun. I also want to mention that, that if you haven't noticed, if you've been listening and you don't notice. That's this, the second beer. This is a self-produced podcast. There is only Doug and I making this. Douglas is a producer. He does all the production work <laughs> and most of the writing on the podcast. And I do, I'm actually engineering the podcast, and I do all the editing. And the reason why I mention this is when you edit, you tend to listen to something over and over and over. So I listen to us speak quite a lot. And, you know, Doug's a great speaker. He's a great orator. It's fantastic. I edit him very little, but... I'm fucking great. But (laughs) me... (laughs) And it's amazing to listen to yourself for hours and hours and hours. I just want to mention one thing. I know that I have a stupid fucking laugh. I know this. Now, I, no one has told me this, and I appreciate that no one has told me this. Just acknowledging it in <laughs> but advance. But I'm acknowledging that I'm aware of this because I hear it over and over, and it is completely sincere. My laugh is sincere. I'm really laughing like that, and I notice it now in my real life when I laugh that I laugh like this. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> See, I'm doing it now. <laughs> and I listen to myself. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Stop going ha, ha, ha. But I do it, and I'm <laughs> owning up to it, and I am sincerely laughing like that, because <laughs> I have a lot of fun doing this, and I'm laughing, but I do, I, I, it's, I'm like a cat who says meow, I laugh by saying Is somebody ha, trolling ha, ha. you on the internet? No, like, no, nobody has told me this, okay. nobody has said, you know, this guy is, is laughing is fucking lame, no one has said that yet, I am trolling myself. Okay, noted, I'm, And good. I just want to mention that I am aware of this. 
What are we drinking, Doug? Well, I'm so happy you asked, John. Uh, this is our beer, Pauline, one of the uh, Northeast IPA recipes we have here in the store. This beer uh, was brewed on 918 of this year. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. This this beer Tasting was good. canned on 918 of this, of this year. Uh, and it's one of the new things that we are able to do here at the store. We have a hand canner. And we are uh, going to be opening that up to anyone who brews a BOP with us, a brew on premises batch with are us. Are we really? Yeah. Oh, so I find out about so many things on this podcast. Yeah, I don't really talk to you a lot. No, unless we don't we're talk on this podcast. We're on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we are like two ships that pass in the night. And I just thought it would be appropriate. Yeah, Jack and I were talking. Uh, we've had a couple of requests to can some beer. Um, and now we have the canner. Oh, awesome. We've got the system kind of worked out. It's super messy and you lose some beer. So yeah. you get less than you want. Yeah, don't, but don't wear your nice clothes to the canning it's session. It's pretty sweet. And you do get to can can this the beer. The beers taste great. And thus far, what, what is it? It's uh, 11, 11, 12 today? 11, 13? Yeah, something like in that. November 13th. So it's been two months in the can. And I got to say, this beer, it no. cleared up, but it's delicious. No like, oxidation. No it oxidation did clear up, at didn't all. It? Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I didn't roll it before I poured it. I probably should have done mm. that to see if it. The old can roll, but, and still lots of hops left. Lots of. I like the fact that I found out about this stuff on the podcast. I one day, you know, I'm gonna sit down with Doug in the podcast, and he's gonna say, "So we went out of business." I'm gonna be like, "We did." <laughs> but the podcast is <laughs> the still podcast going is strong. Still going strong. <laughs> <laughs> Although we're gonna have to sell most of the equipment. Right, Doug. Why do we only have one microphone? <laughs> Move over, John, and let me tell you. And we're recording into an iPhone. Why does that happen? Yeah, we won't be able. To, we won't be able to afford iPhones. It's cool. <laughs> All right, we've got some events uh, going on at we the do. store here. Uh, John, do you want to start with the home brewsitions? Uh, so uh, I'm in a band with um, some local brewers. I'm sure you know about it. Called the Home Brewsitions. We're kind of a silly thing, but we're a good band. Uh, we do classic rock songs where we change the words to be about brewing beer, and yes, that's it. Uh, so it's me and Chris Kuzmi and Daley Crafton and Ryan Phillips and you're uh, performing. We're performing, and wait, I want to say the other guys, Paul Stellato. Oh, sorry. And am I missing anybody? Oh, <laughs> Sam Burlingham. Jesus, how could I forget Sam? How could you forget Sam? So that's that's the band, and we are playing at 18th Ward, which is I think the newest brewery in New York City. It's over in Bushwick, Brooklyn, right across from um, Brooklyn Steel. I haven't even been there yet. I'm actually going there tonight, but we're playing Saturday, the 16th, November 16th. I think we're going to be coming on around nine o'clock. Awesome. You know, rock and roll who fucking knows when you're going to come on. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to try to be there by nine o'clock. You guys have played all the big brewery venues. We in have the played city, all the big you? brewery yeah. venues. Yeah. We've done some uh, killer gigs. Uh, we rarely rehearse. We're rehearsing tonight. Songs like My Fermentation and I've Been Loving Brew Too Long. You get, you get it. <laughs> so I think it's going to be free admission. I don't know shit about this gig, as you can tell, but show up at 18th Ward. Drink lots of beer. Uh, this Saturday, the 16th. This Saturday. And uh, rock They'll and roll. They'll be pouring beer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're, open. they're open. They're open. Okay. Yeah, I awesome. have, and uh, the, the brewer is Daley Crafton. I'd like mm, to mention mm -hmm. that. He's, uh, I don't think he owns a place, but he is the brewer, and he is a guitar player and singer. One of the guitar players and singers <laughs> in the home position. We have three. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a great show, so hopefully we'll see you there. Fantastic. Uh, we've also got a few classes coming up here in December. So on December 8th, we've got our yeast class, which is always a lot of fun. John, uh, John and David have been teaching that recently, and that is a two-hour lecture about everybody's favorite microorganism. And then you do a, you do a tasting we'll do a afterwards. Tasting, yeah. yeah, one wort that's been fermented uh, eight times with eight different yeasts. It is really a way of learning about yeast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's by tasting. I love the tasting. It's, it's such a good thing. It's, it's really edifying. Uh, also, the all grain class coming up December 1st. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you should learn what all grain is and then come take a class about how to brew your beer all grain instead of using those extracts. That's that a fun are. class because we actually make a beer together. Mm hmm uh, we have a couple of samples going. Nothing, nothing special. We just kind of sip some beer while making beer together. It's a fun class. It's a fun it's like class. You, out that's with the one you know. still always teach because it, you like teaching. It gives me it. a chance to brew beer. Yeah. Here. <laughs> that's a, I still like, see, there's a laugh. I'm telling you. Ha, uh, ha, 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 ha. I, I still like brewing beer, you know? And so it gives me a chance to do it and to teach people how to do it. So that's a lot of fun. So then the last class I want to bring up is the class that I'm the most excited about. Da, 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 da. And I'm not excited about it because of the content. <laughs> I'm excited about it because you're done working on uh, it. Finally. Geez, yeah, it's, it's been, it's the been like whale. a three year process, something like that. Yeah. Four, three, ever four. since 
John Palmer's water book came mm-hmm. out. Where they had this idea of been doing water the water class. class. Yeah, Finally. January twelfth, New Year water class. Yeah, much much research has gone into this. Much this is gonna have a tasting as well. Yeah, and that that'll be going live on the website hopefully today. So you should be able to sign up for it. Uh, Saturday the sixteenth. Uh, when this comes out. So, so yeah. the, the class is basically going to uh, just go over water chemistry a little bit. We're not going to go too deep into it, but the idea of all our classes is for you to make better beer. And so uh, we're going to teach you about how to make better beer, but we're also going to have a, a tasting of uh, six beers, I think it's going to be. <laughs> I haven't mm-hmm. done them yet, but mm-hmm. um, untreated and treated. And it's uh, going to be two styles to show how treating the water with salts and acids and stuff will actually uh, improve your beer style so you can actually a beer flavor so you can figure that out that's great i'm looking yeah, forward to that i'm looking yeah. forward to it as well uh <laughs> well ever since uh, so john i don't if you don't know john did a talk um at HomebrewCon this year on water that is the pre, you know precursor to this class yep. basically um and it's actually the precursor to this podcast today sure and that's it's sort of some of the stuff that you're going to bring up during the class i kind of wanted to wet everyone's whistle ha, 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 ha. uh and now uh yeah so let's uh that was let's an sincere laugh that was definitely well that was a bad joke so it's very, <laughs> please cut that out okay. Okay. Uh, also as far as the store we're going to be closed for thanksgiving so that we can all enjoy our tofu turkey with our families or real turkeys depending with on our what families you eat. in amsterdam but we're open the next day we will be open on black friday i'm going to amsterdam when are you going to Amsterdam? I'm going to Amsterdam for Thanksgiving. Holy yeah, shit. We're going on the 28th. I'm, I'm honestly finding this stuff out <laughs> right now. <laughs> we so got to hang out more, is John. Is there anything else you need to tell uh, me about? Let's yeah. see. Yeah, when, uh, I'll let you know when Penny gets accepted to a middle school. That's oh, a big that's deal. Good, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. the next, next big piece of advice. I know, I, see, I oh, I'm getting married. Yeah. You are not no, I'm not mad. getting oh, married. <laughs> I just, I just, oh golly, I just pooped. Not that no. you would do badly. We won't get too much into yeah, your personal no, life, okay. but you would it's do, okay. you would do. I just do very fine. well. You doing fine? Uh, but uh, how long are we going to Amsterdam for? Uh, five days. We're oh, going to, shit. yeah, we're going to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cop uh, out and do the uh, Heineken experience. I'm kind of actually yeah. oh, looking no, forward to that. Oh no, that's not copping out, man. Yeah, that, okay. That's gonna be, I haven't done it, but I would do that in a heartbeat. I, I, I mean, mean, like you can't go Heineken, enough. Man. And then Jack has suggested several good breweries to go try, and we might go to Brussels. You got to take a trip. Might make an excursion oh, yeah, out to it. Belgium. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a blast. It's, it's like three hours. Okay. Cantillon or, or just sitting in the Grand Place. Just sitting and, drink, and yeah, drinking. It's, I mean, Amsterdam would be hard to pull yourself away from, but it's worth the day trip. So before we dive in, uh, the winner of the Heath Sobel Memorial Cup was Shinobu Kato. Shinobu! Shinobu! If you don't know Shinobu uh, and you haven't listened to the last podcast... Go back right now and listen to the last podcast. Um, Shinobu is a sake brewer from Bushwick. Uh, well, from, from Japan, Japan originally, and then moved to the West Coast, and then moved to Tennessee, and then started brewing sake, and then moved here and opened a sake brewery, and is now opening his own sake brewery. He'll tell you all that on the podcast. It's all on last, the podcast, last, last yeah. Podcast, I just yeah. summarized the whole thing, so I guess you don't have to listen. Anyway, <laughs> uh, John was there. You tasted his uh, sake? On this past swap. He was pouring his sake from actually last year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because he hasn't produced, he's not able he to produce anything yet, yet. But he's going to be opening at the end of the year. Again, listen to the podcast. He just won hands down. We had some really great beer. Actually, this past swap, <laughs> everyone uh, was pouring their beer left over from Gravity. Oh, the dear. Gravity, and yeah. they were pouring the high gravity stuff because that's what they had left over because they poured less of it at mm-hmm. Gravity, but they made the same amount. So uh, Barry had... A, 12% cider and mead <laughs> and um, there was barley wines everything was really everybody got pretty messed big. up yeah, yeah everything was big everybody here try this it's 14% and, and Shinobu sake is 16% and so <laughs> it was a thing <laughs> that's a thing yeah wow. and you'll hear it in this interview coming up that I am Toasty? A little bit toasty. So Shinobu. I recorded him on my iPhone because I forgot my portable <laughs> recorder and everything, but it came out pretty good, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was a great swap. It was mm-hmm. really, really cool, but he won hands down. We had All the beers were great, and I'd like to just mention that again, is that uh, it's such a pleasure. If I don't know if a lot of people like are, are in a business that can see the fruits of their labor through other people. I don't mm-hmm. know if that makes sense. It's uh, it's like, well, what do you do? Well, I, I, I'm a printer. I used to be a printer. I, I don't get, I never got to see people like have really use their printed material really well or something and be like, oh, right. I'm so proud of how you 
used what I printed for you. <laughs> Those booklets you printed really did really change the world. Right, yeah. yeah. But seeing how people are getting better and better and better as brewers through these swaps mm -hmm. and innovative and stuff. And, well, and it, the events like, like yeah. Gravity like, or like Brew for a Cure. Right, like you know? all that. Yeah. They, raised, they raised upwards of $5,000 at Brew for a Cure for St. Jude's. It's so Hospital. gratifying. Yeah. It's like one of the reasons that Doug and I get up in the morning in the morning yeah. is because you guys are killing it so that's a that's a sincere thank you to everyone and for making good fucking beer because i don't want to drink shitty beer so yeah thank i'm you. done drinking shitty beer yeah except you, heineken you, heineken is going to be great in amsterdam it's, it'll we'll be see. great okay it, it's actually it's delicious i'm yeah. gonna I, well i have to drink a shitty one here to compare yes you yeah. should <laughs> okay enough about me you should just run over a skunk and that'll be the same as drinking <laughs> a, a heineken so here's shinobu <laughs> Hi, Shinobu. Hello. So we just had you on our podcast. <laughs> and it was great. Thank you uh, very much. I haven't listened to my voice yet. <laughs> no, yeah, it was good. It was really good. Um, so Shinobu won the coveted, it's called the Heath Sobel Memorial Fucking Cup. Okay, I cannot remember that, buddy. Thank yeah, you very much. It was uh, uh, named after Heath, who was a uh, one of the early swap people. And uh, so... You did win this before, and you said you won it the first time that you actually came to the swap. Yes, that was with like two years ago. So, yes. so uh, Shinobu won with his sake again, <laughs> and uh, you felt that this wasn't fair because it was sake and everyone else had beer. Yes, you know, and then nobody has sake, nobody brings own sake. Right. Yeah, but... Everybody tried to sake. It was a, a, a clear winner. They knew what they were voting for, so that's okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I mean, this is uh, also a kind of justification for the fact that you might sell a lot of sake when you're in Kato Sake Works, right? People are yes, liking it. I hope that must that. feel good, right? That, yes. that, that uh, people aren't like, oh, yeah, good try. Yep. <laughs> and maybe we need to develop a recipe for the home brewer sake. Sure. Right? Yeah. 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 So Shinobu actually brought some um, koji rice mm -hmm. today. So we actually have to take care of that. Yep. And I like the fact that you are also very much into uh, people making their own sake. It's yep. not like you're just trying to say, oh, no, this is, this is my thing. So. Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. So now you, now you have uh, two cups. Yes. Uh, and a, a, a pint of sake would be a lot. Yeah, that's true. I, I'll try this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta... So when do you think you're going to open, man? Hopefully next month. Really? Well, no, this is already November. So like this month or next month. By the end of the year? By the end of the year, yeah. So, I mean, you know where to find out about this. Bitter Nesters, we will tell everybody when this happens. Thank you very much, Congratulations. Sean. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by the letters H, O, and the number two. <laughs> you must have children. I really, I've just been dying to do that. It came to me literally last night. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was thinking about what we're going to do on the podcast tomorrow because we write it usually in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then it just, it was one of the things. Oh, and then I had to look up uh, the, the, was it the rhyme of the ancient mariner? So the, the section where it actually talks about water. So it's water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Wow. Yeah, good stuff. I it's always it's like 18 pages heavy. Yeah, of, of internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a no, pretty heavy no. poem. So we're back, and I wanted to talk with you a little bit about water, John. All right. Yeah, um, mostly because I... I've brewed beer for a long time now, and I understand how the grain works. I understand how hops fit into the whole thing. I can mash at different temperatures. I mean, I've built a pretty awesome brew system here, so technologically speaking, I don't have any issues. My beer is consistently good every single time. And one of the few things, oh, and my fermentation control is spot yeah. on. We've got fermenters and glycol systems. Like we're, we're, We've got all our other problems solved here at the store. Um, but the thing that still gets me and the thing that I still guess on the most is what the fuck to do with my water. <laughs> so here you are in front of me. I can actually ask you questions for a little bit yeah, and okay, I kind of wanted sure. to dial it in. So uh, the first thing I want to bring up is uh, chlorine and chloramine. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that and sort of just yeah, demyth it for me? Well, one thing is that you should be extremely grateful for both chlorine and chloramine um, because you don't have cholera. 
and that is I don't a, like cholera nobody should like cholera waterborne illnesses are, are, are serious shit even so, love in the time of cholera is yeah questionable I think the only the only thing worse than bad water is bad air like water is super important we, we die without water mm-hmm. after no, none of it for seven days or from bad water air I can do about five minutes, I think, and then I'm done. <laughs> so air quality is super important when you're super, brewing. Super, super important, <laughs> make sure. number one. Make sure then, you're well-ventilated space. And then chlorine and chloramine are disinfectants that are very important so that we have potable water. Um, but what do they actually do in my beer? Well, if you don't, especially with chloramine, because chlor- chlorine is volatile. So mm-hmm. chlor- chlorine pretty much in the heating of the hot liquor tank will dissipate. You, okay. you don't have to worry too much about it. But do you have chlorine or chloramine? You have to ask your water supply people. Luckily, in New York City, we use chlorine. So mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty easy. But what it does, if it is in, gets into your beer, it will react with polyphenols that are... Um, a type of tannin that are both in, not type of tannin, they're a fucking tannin, that, <laughs> I never thought I would say the sentence, they're a fucking tannin. They're a fucking tannin, tannin yeah. Um, but th- they're in hops, they're in uh, some in malts, mm-hmm. they will react with uh, chlorine and cr- create chlorophenols, which are that Band-Aid or antiseptic flavor. Gotcha, you get. okay. Now the worst time for that, Honestly, where we, we've tasted it the most is uh, with extract batches that are partial boils. Mm. Uh, so Partial mash, you mean? No, partial boils. So we're only, with that? extracts, we only do three-gallon boil, and oh, then we oh, yeah, top yeah. off okay. with water, right? So yep. we say top off with water out of the tap. Uh, unfortunately, you're adding fresh chlorine. Mm-hmm. Your, your boil would have taken care of the, the chlorine that was in the, the steep in the boil, but the top off is where the problem is. And that's so you're actually mixing the chlorine directly with the, yeah. the you know, uh, tannins. You're you're basically dosing it, yeah, gotcha. and okay. and especially during the summer. The summer we have higher chlorine uh, amounts mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's more bacteria blooms or algae blooms that they try to keep down. So mm-hmm. they sometimes when you turn on the tap in New York <laughs> during the summer, it, it smells like a swimming pool, right? Yeah. Um, so it it is again chlorine is uh, volatile, volatile, so you can just leave it out for a couple hours and then use it as top top off, or you can filter it with uh, a carbon filter. We'll do that. Okay. So, but that takes a lot. You know, that's a lot of Britter. Yep. Britter. It's a lot I'm of from Britter. New York, so I call it Britter. A lot of Britter. Uh, or you can just use a little bit of sodium or potassium emitted by sulfite. And, and that's Campton. And I mean, very little. Just a pinch into like three or four gallons will take care of it. You can actually smell the chlorine dissipate. And the cool thing about Campton is it also takes care of chloramine, which is mm. not as volatile. Gotcha. Chloramine works really well for municipalities because it doesn't. Uh, dissipate so quickly mm-hmm. but it's not great for brewing it's like it, it will cre- create the same chlorophenols god i'm a fucking nerd but yeah yeah all no that you're a pretty pretty big nerd pretty big yeah. nerd but it's all it's all been water <laughs> okay so to sum up for for chlorine and chloramine chlorine we typically don't have to worry about too much unless we're adding it post boil like using it right. extract batch um if we just heat up our hot liquor that should Oil off most of the chlorine. It, yeah. uh, chloramine, if that's if we look at our water report, and that's what they're it's using. Chloramine. Chloramine. Sorry for my pronunciation. So chloramine, um, a little sodium metal by sulfite is really the solution. Solution. Now there. what I what I do is I treat all the water. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I, I, I just go what they call it scorched earth. <laughs> Make sure that I'm dechlorinated. Okay. Um, I like to use potassium metal by sulfite, so I don't put sodium into it. But mm-hmm. I mean, using so little, you won't taste it. Okay. Anyway. So, to kind of move on from from chlorine and chloramine, yeah, yeah, nailed it. Uh, to move on from chlorine and chloramine, I, when you're thinking about you know treating your water, I've heard you I've heard you describe it as seasoning your it water is. a little bit. Can you kind of can you kind of expound on that a little bit? I have to uh, give props to John Palmer. Uh, mm-hmm. He's the, the one who always is trying to make it a little easier for people to understand as far as seasoning. And that's only one part of water, but I, I want to actually just go back a little bit and okay. mention something about water. I'm going to pour you more beer. And while you pour me more beer, is that the most important parts of brewing, and this is also goes back to John Palmer, uh, is, and this is in order of importance, is number one is uh, cleanliness and sanitation. Because mm-hmm. if you're not clean and sanitary, uh, everything else you do up until that point is just, you've wasted your time. Now you can get through it. I mean, you're, maybe there are bugs in there, but we can't see them <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh cleanliness sanitation will uh, allow us to have a pure culture and that's what we're doing unless you don't want a pure culture but i mean 
it's the most important thing, number one. Right. Number two is going to be uh, your pitch count, meaning the amount of yeast that you, th- you throw in there uh, and the health of that yeast sure. in, the, in the same kind of sentence. So make, making sure you have a good pitch of healthy yeast is, again, fermentation, super important in a uh, sanitized environment. Then the next thing is going to be fermentation temperature. That's the first off flavor I taste, mm-hmm. um, meaning it's the most prevalent off flavor that I taste when people give me a beer. It's like, I'll say, what temperature do you ferment this at? And they're like, well, 117. Know. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I've had it on my armpit for the past two weeks. And it's, it's London like, three. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a problem. And we can talk more and more about uh, yeast and, uh, and all that stuff later on in a different podcast. But um, there are there are these Norwegian yeasts that really... Uh, kind of take that away episode two with yeah, Lance from Omega Lance, if anybody's right. interested yeah. so yeah check that out with the Kvike yeast and stuff the next one number four is now your recipe and as brewers a lot of times we focus on the recipe first we're kind of mm-hmm. like I want to have make sure I put the hops in at this time and it's by crystal molten crystal yeah right and and this, the, yeah. All, the, all the things and the blends and all mm-hmm. that and that's great I mean that's the fun part but if you are fermenting poorly at a bad temperature in a, a non-sanitary environment I don't care what your recipe is. The it quality of your ingredients matter. doesn't matter at all. And then yeah. the last thing is water. The chemistry of water affects the mash and affects the flavor. But if you don't have those other four things nailed down, then the chemistry of your water is not going to matter. You know, it just, it doesn't, it, 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 it's not going to make anything better. And that's one thing that I, I, I push is that water chemistry isn't going to make a bad beer good. Mm-hmm. It'll make a good beer better. That's, that's, that's yeah. the general feeling of it. Yeah. Um, how, how deep do you want me to go into this? You get it deep like water? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Because th- there are there are three reasons that we treat water. Well, here's, I'll, I'll here's, 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 here's where I was going to... Well, yeah, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to give away the whole class right now. No. I mean, you, you got to come take the class. You got to come uh, take the class. <laughs> I should or, stop right in the middle. <laughs> there are three reasons, three reasons why you treat your water. Number one, number two, and the, the most important... Or, number three. Sign up now for... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find... Click here. <laughs> click here to find out more. Yeah. <laughs> These uh, celebrities look way different than they did when they were kids. <laughs> <laughs> this beer tasted, tastes way better with water treatment. Click here to find out how. <laughs> All right, so let let this idea slosh around in your head for a little bit. Thank you. Uh, give me give me the sort of like general overview. Well, of, of why, why, what, what sort of give, give me the three things, John. The three things. That's, that's going to be my we next already question. went over one of them. One of them was dechlorination. Well, that yeah. is the first thing. Okay. And that's a, it's important. It's mm-hmm. like it is the main additive that's added to water in right. any municipality, right? So that we don't die. Again, thank you, everyone who cleans our water and makes us not die. Thank you, chemistry. I, we really take that shit for granted. The other people that I want to thank are the people that are in charge of our poop getting out of our house and going somewhere else. I, we really take that for granted. We really do. We yeah. do. And that's an that's a industry and it's, you know, it's a business. And it's, thank you, everyone, for doing that and making sure that we don't die from that either. Number two is to adjust the water... Water adjustments are to adjust pH of the mash. Right. Uh, that is one, one of the reasons why we would adjust the water according to the chemistry of the water to begin with. Mm-hmm. You might not have to adjust your, your water chemistry in order for the mash pH to be adjusted, but by hitting a proper mash pH, mm-hmm. you will have better enzymatic reaction, better conversion. You will have clearer wort. You will have better hop uh, extraction. You will actually have better fermentation mm-hmm. if you're within a proper pH. If you're not within a proper pH, you'll still have conversion. You'll still have beer and stuff, but it's a way of dialing in your pH for a lot of different reasons, but mainly for, for conversion. Well, and your, and your mash pH is, is also affected by the malts that you're using in your mash, isn't it? Indeed it is. But yeah. I mean, the water, the mash pH is affected by that yeah. depending on your water chemistry. Right. Okay. So the, your initial water chemistry is important. The one mistake that people make a lot of time is, is that they think they have to adjust the pH of the water, mm-hmm. but that's not what it is. You're adjusting the pH of the mash according to the water chemistry, according to the malt bill. So gotcha. it get, that's where it gets a little hairy. And this is mm-hmm. one of the things that hung me up. Not that mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I, I, I got hung up a little bit on being able to explain it. Right. Without going deep into the chemistry mm-hmm. aspect of it because it's a to an hour class, you know, it could actually be a semester. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Well, problem. I mean, people make their entire careers out of water chemistry, mm-hmm. like build, build whole careers out of it. Yep. Hence and, the, and John you know, Palmer getting 
poop out of our water. Yeah. Hence getting the poop out of our water. Yeah, that's like a whole career. It's a whole career, whole yeah. industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't want to get too much into like adjusting pH in the mash because honestly, I know you can go pretty deep with this and this is probably the two-hour We're going two gonna, we're gonna to talk about it a lot uh, during That'll be, the, uh, the class. But like what's, what's the rule of thumb? Like let's say I'm a lazy bastard, right? I mean, get is a new it, hobby. Get a new hobby. Okay, so well, I mean, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm 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 lazy in that like I've already built my system. I've already right. built this stuff. I don't I don't have time to go out and get a water chemistry kit yet. Like right. it's on the horizon. But like, how do I like you know until January twelfth until I can take your course and learn everything? What's my what am I doing to improve my like mash pH? Just okay. On so the fly. we're talking about New York Municipal Water New again. York Municipal again, water. your source water is super important, mm -hmm. and then we're talking about the grain bill so let's just make it real simple mm -hmm. pale ale ipa if you add a quarter pound for a five pound grist quarter pound of acidulated malt will definitely help you with conversion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i can tell you that from experience and that's not doing any math not doing any chemistry just that's not going to affect your flavor as far as acidity but it will uh, uh, help you with conversion so if you're making a pale or an ipa and you throw in quarter pound of acidulated malt you will have better conversion. Right. I had a guy come in yesterday. He was telling me he was have, having uh, problems with efficiency. Yeah. And I said, what, what water are you using? And he said, oh, New York water. I'm like, where do you live? And he said, Long Island. I said, well, that's not New York municipal water. Those are aquifers. Right. And I said, you really need to have it checked and take my class. And then we can talk about it. Because sure. if I don't know the base water, then I, I can't talk to you. Right. I mean, I'll talk to you about other shit. <laughs> <laughs> right but you can't you yeah, can't my, my love life would be terrible well it's like it's like if, if somebody when somebody comes in and asks the question you know uh how much alcohol is in this beer i'm like okay so what was your original gravity my final gravity was you know 1.010 right. what's the original what's the original gravity i don't, I don't know. know what beer was it i, I don't, don't know, know. So how you much do grain do. did you use? I know yeah. if I drink a 12 ounce bottle of beer by my level of drunkenness, what the actual <laughs> alcohol content is. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm that good. Yeah, I have to, I have to measure by the six pack now at this point. <laughs> so to, well, one or two, and I'm like, oh, that's. Gonna... I have to measure by money. <laughs> <laughs> if you give me twenty dollars, I'll know how much alcohol. Forty, I'll definitely know. Definitely how much know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I'll go to Colvinhoven and I'll drink. Uh, so let's 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 right, talk so about number, number three. Two. That was number, number two. Three. Mash pH, and you know, and, and honestly, number three can affect number two. Oh my God, what? Uh, and that would be the ionic content of the water, what we add or take away. Ionic content ionic of the water. Content, Holy yeah. shit. It's like the ironic content of the water, oh, okay. but it's completely different. Is that, does that involve sarcasm in any it way? It does a little, a little bit. <laughs> um, ions are a, uh, either a compound or a, a element that have a negative or a positive net charge. Extra electron or yeah, missing an electron. Or missing an electron. Yeah. Calcium is a big one, a biggie. Magnesium is less big, but it's still part of it. And then there's sulfate and chloride. Those are the, the ones that we are interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, when they uh, get into a mash, they disassociate and they can actually, which means they, they stop they being dissolve. together, yeah. they dissolve. And they will affect the mash pH by reacting with phosphates in the mash. So that'll lower the mash pH. But, but what? But what? You can add salts to the boil. Mm -hmm. If you add calcium sulfate, which is gypsum, that will give you the sulfate flavors that helps to uh, give you uh, crispness that they call it uh, or a hop uh, have, helps the hops uh, hoppiness. Uh, give the hoppiness to the it bright hoppiness. so for ipas you add a, a little bit of calcium uh, sulfate you add gypsum mm -hmm. and you uh, can do that it's salting just like you're salting food mm -hmm. and then uh, the chloride and calcium chloride will help bring out malty flavors okay uh, here's a quick just little thing you can do at home kids if you have a porter or a stout Something that's dark, that's uh, malt mm -hmm. forward beer. Add a little sodium chloride, which is table salt, table salt to it, yep. and you'll notice that it gets sweeter. People actually will uh, put that on fruit, on melons and stuff. Put a little mm -hmm. salt, and the chloride accentuates the sweetness. So that's number three. Is that's the flavoring of beer, which, as I said, also affects the it can affect the pH if you use it in the mash. Do you see how how this is a complicated subject? But, oh, absolutely, but in a yeah. Way it's not. So the one piece of advice I can give to people, and people say, "Well, I want to do a water thing, but I'm, you know, I don't want to listen to you." Mm -hmm. I tell them, New York Municipal Water, IPA, teaspoon, five gallons, teaspoon of gypsum into the boil, was going to both give you 
some of that sulfate and also calcium for the yeast because we don't mm-hmm. we have low calcium water the yeast uh, flocculate better and have better health if they have some, some calcium builds they get stronger bones right right they don't have bones i'm kidding uh, yeah uh, and then if you're doing a darker beer post mash like during the boil quarter teaspoon maybe maybe half mm-hmm. teaspoon of uh, calcium chloride I say that because I'm very sensitive to chloride. It tastes like salt to me. Right. So if you overdo it, it can be actually salty. Okay. But it will uh, accentuate that, that maltiness. You can do both also. Mm-hmm. And that's a, a balance. That's a, a sulfate to chloride ratio. And we'll talk about that in the class. Yeah. I'm not going to go into that's that a, right a now. That's a detailed, detailed It's a detailed subject. thing. Yeah. So it's, it may sound complicated and crazy, like, you know, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not once you, you see the path of it. Like when mm-hmm. you see what you can do to get what you want. Right. And we use calculators for it. I am not going to give you math during this class, just so you know. <laughs> that's, that's very important. Yeah. yeah. yeah I have, I have, a, I have a salting suggestion. So if you take, if you're making like a goza and you put salt in it with like a coriander and everything, right. you make the beer, you let it ferment <laughs> for a couple of weeks and then you take it and you pour it in the drain, down the, the drain. drain. <laughs> just pour it down the drain. And then make another beer. Yeah. No, gozas are, are salty because of the initial water was brackish. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's, it, it's not like they wanted it to be that way. <laughs> no, they just wanted to not get cholera. Right. Yeah, that was Again. Back to the not getting cholera. Back yeah. to not getting and cholera. And only having brackish water to drink. Right. So. And so they were like, well, we'll just make beer with it. And mm-hmm. we'll, one day, people in Brooklyn will. Make this beer make for this fun. Make this beer for fun. Mm-hmm. They, it's actually in an ancient text. It says that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the prophecy. Mm-hmm. The Nicodemus prophecies of you know, beer. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is I had I've had the pleasure of spending three days in a car with John Palmer mm-hmm. uh, when his water book came out, and just I interviewed him and I talked to him about water, and John will talk to you about water chemistry and beer chemistry and stuff like crazy. So that started me down the this rabbit hole. Thank you, John Palmer. Thank both, you, John Palmer. Both thank you, and both thank you. Because uh, now I'm, I'm just, you know, and it, 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 all the ingredients are synergistic. You have to remember that with beer, they all react with each other in one way or another to make this drink that mm-hmm. we have. So, um, so there's no one thing that's more important than the other. I would say the most important again is fermentation, but it's still they're all synergistic. Um, we do have on our blog before we did this thing. We have a, a, a pretty good blog post about when John was here and an interview with him. If you want to hear more about uh, water chemistry with John, awesome. We should, we'll cool. link to that in the show and notes. And if you're a member of the American Homebrew Association, they just recently have been sending out. I don't know if you saw this, Doug. But I saw been, this. Yeah, they've been sending out. Uh, check out the five water talks that you can learn more about water. Not that I'm trying to dissuade our class, but uh, they they have been focusing a little bit more on water and my my talk is one of them mm-hmm. on that so honestly this is cool. this is such a complex subject that i personally like the repetition i mean like you say they say you can learn three ways right by doing by writing and by reading or speaking or read, whatever it is by teaching but and well <laughs> and by teaching but but you know most people aren't going to go out and teach a water class on water maybe they'll have their friends over and they'll explain it to them but that's another way another way to do right. it but like going and listening to your talk and then taking the class and then doing it themselves and right. then doing it with a friend and then right. asking you questions and tasting like and always tasting, tasting, tasting i mean tasting. that's really yeah. important like you're, you're doing this to make good beer so mm-hmm. you're not doing this if your ph is perfect no one's gonna give a fuck if the beer is bad right <laughs> so i mean it's all part of everything it's like hey but it was my ph was 5.4 you know it's like yeah but you used 18 pounds of chocolate malt. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> but your beer sucks. So, yeah. so it, it is, it's just part of the process, and it's, it's something to learn and, and stuff. Another thing I would suggest is going to Martin Bruingard's uh, site, Bruin Water. Mm, mm-hmm. That I learned a lot. He has a, a very easy page on that for brewing, and he has a great, he has a great calculator right. for, uh, for water in there. So that's, that's, that's another piece of advice. Anyway, John, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really, <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate having you. Oh man, what time is it? I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about on that, that subject. I don't think. Wow, I got interviewed on my own fucking show. Oh, I don't gotta, worry. I have to interview you next time. No, 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 no. I've got I've got several interviews planned. I mean, we've got multiple subjects on multiple classes. I think it'd be fun to give people who haven't taken the class just a little taste of what they're missing. That's true. Um, and I think I think you've given a, a lot of practical knowledge that other people who can't make it to bitter and esters can really use. Well, I also and, yeah, I, I yeah. do want to tease them a little bit with it. Like it's like you're not going to come to a class and I go water. It's wet. Jazz it's, hands. It's actually not wet. 
<laughs> it isn't. <laughs> it's things that touch water are wet, but water is not technically wet. Ask Jack about it. Jack knows a lot about water chemistry too. Jack is a well, chemist. Well, Jack's a chemist by, yeah. by schooling. But, yeah. you know, that's what, one of the things here at Bitter and Estrus is that we really try to keep on top of stuff and, and teach people things, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, we want, again, we want you to make good beer. Because we don't want to drink bad beer. We I mean, that's really one of the critical components of owning a homebrew shop is minimizing the amount of bad beer in the world out of self-preservation mostly. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So I think uh, I'm going to go back to being podcast host now. Hey, John, welcome back from your trip there. Really <laughs> wow, that was a really great interview with John Lapola from Bitter <laughs> Esters. <laughs> he was really fascinating. I would um, like to know more about that guy. No, I think I'd like to. I think I'd like to talk with you a little bit more like this. I mean, we've done ten podcasts True. now. Yep. A lot of them have been interviews, um, and I think getting into a little bit of subject matter on the actual home brewing would be good yeah, to good to keep good. moving because we have a lot. We have a lot going on, and we there's do. a lot of questions out there that I feel like we can just start taking on. Yep. Um, which, by the way, if you have any questions, Douglas at bitterinvestors dot com, John at bitterinvestors dot com, or Douglas or John at bitterinvestors dot com. Is it Douglas or John at bitterinvestors dot com, or Douglas or John at see what you can brew? Uh, you know, I've got them all. Yeah, but really. Yeah, try bitterinvestors dot com. I've been having a little trouble with see what you see can what brew. you can brew dot yeah. com. Yeah. Yeah. And remember to subscribe. Uh, oh, remember to subscribe. Yeah. yeah. And we're on Spotify now. This is we're great. On Spotify now. That's so yeah. cool. I, I think. I got I I to double I, check. Since I am the engineer here, I should t test it for sound quality. Yeah, probably. I listened to our last podcast, uh, which I don't normally listen to the whole thing after it's published, but it was pretty good. I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Shinobu was great. Shinobu was great. Like if you haven't listened, listened to, Shino to Shinobu, Shinobu is, uh, it, it's a lot about sake and it's really a lot of fun. So. Yeah, I went back and listened to that too. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it for today. Oh, uh, right. Anything else going on? Oh, we're going to can. Oh, I made a beer. I made a beer, which I was pretty excited about. And I guessed at my water chemistry and I fucking nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, I mean, <laughs> don't try that at all. <laughs> well, I have a lot of, I have a lot of like ballpark estimates yeah, from you. We do. From, well, usually from what I, usually what I do is I like, I, I write a recipe or I get an idea and then I write a recipe and then I give it to Jack and Jack make suggestions and then I give it to John and John gives me water chemistry suggestions and then I ignore both of Jack and John's suggestions and do my own thing. It takes a village and, to make a beer. you know, sometimes it turns out pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and most of the time it turns out really good. We've been doing um, this long enough. And, uh, and I made a, so in the last episode of BYO, Brew Your Own Magazine, there was a article on, um, forgotten German beer styles. Wow. And there's a the, uh, bunch of different ones. There's like an old kind of like boil for six hours until you get a syrup and then only ferment it like 20%. And you get like this sweet 3% alcohol beer. And I forget all the names. They're all like, okay, so add some smoke malt and add some lacto some acid malt or use lactobacillus uh, to make it because all of these beers had lactobacillus in them. And at they the were time. all smoky because of the way that they uh, malted. And they, they were all smoky because of the way they malted. But I made a beer. I made a beer from this called the Kutter beer, which is a, um, where's, where's the Kolsch from again? Kolsch is from Cologne, from Germany, Cologne. where you can never get lost because the cathedral is so big. Because the cathedral is so big. Well, the beer is very, very old there. And so this Kutter beer is supposedly a precursor to the Kolsch beer, and it's got barely any hops because at the time they were just learning about hops from, uh, you know, whatever name was then, Hildegard the nun. <laughs> and, um, and so they were like, let's not use too many hops, uh, and let's put some mugwort in there, and then let's put some smoke malt in you there. You didn't put mugwort in there. I didn't did put any uh, mugwort in there. I almost put some mugwort in there. The worst. I love mugwort. Do it smells really? so good, yeah, if you put it in the very end. Um, but... Uh, Made that, I'm um, canning that. I call it cutie beer because I butcher pronunciations and I enjoyed <laughs> that. And I'm serving what? it at my daughter's uh, fundraiser. for Not for children, not to <laughs> children, to the adults who have the money. Well, the, the <laughs> nine-year-olds are the cuties. So. The nine-year-olds are the cuties, yeah. Yeah, when so. I saw I actually saw that on our schedule and I was like, what, <laughs> what the hell is this? What is a cutie beer? I really thought it was going to be like pink and... Have little bunny ears. C U T I yeah. with a little heart above it. Yeah, e that's what I thought. Yeah. B I E R. Yeah, yeah, yeah cutie pretty... beer. <laughs> I anyway. tried it. It was good. It tasted a like beer. a precursor to a Kolsch. Like a smoky precursor like a to smoky a Kolsch with a smidge yeah. of acid. It was yeah, pretty cool. It was that, pretty fun. Yeah, that that um that historical shit is fun. It was fun, and Jeff and I are Jeff um Jeff Lyons from. Uh, Oh, Keg and uh, Lantern, Keg and Lantern. Jeff Lyons from Keg and Lantern, and I are gonna brew, try to brew as many of them as we can. 
of the historical beers. Of the historical beers. Yeah, he got I'm, he got this, jazzed I'm, up I'm by this. I'm just learning this too. Well, we haven't set a date yet. You'll, yeah, as, know, soon as, as soon as as soon as we get serious about the project, you'll you'll hear about it. But yeah, I have to I have to get out there and get Jeff serious. Me so if you're listening to this, this Jeff, I'm ready. Get ready, ready when Jeff. you are. Anytime. Um, We're on the bitter and Esther's train. Woo woo, gonna woo, chug woo. along all day. Woo woo. woo. <laughs> That's a good ending. Gonna make some beer and play. Woo woo. <laughs> Have a bitter and Esther's, Esther's day. day. Woo. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs>